we're going to go back to learning a little bit about the Aztecs and Cortez, but we're also going to focus on tracing an argument. Here's what I mean. We hear and talk about arguments or claims all the time in our daily lives. For instance, you might have a friend who claims, makes an argument that Steph Curry is the greatest basketball player in the NBA today. You might go on to say he has changed the way that people think about earning points, so he's focusing on the long game, and that he holds the all-time record for three-pointers with 2,977 three-point shots that he has made in an NBA game. This would be an example of a really strong argument. An argument is a series of statements for or against something. Arguments are usually supported by claims. That's a statement of fact that something or that something is fact or that something is true. Good claims are supported by evidence. That is facts or ideas, examples that show that something is true or helps prove that something is wrong. So why learn to trace an argument and its evidence? Well, there's a lot of people that make arguments or claims on the internet, in the media, and critical thinkers learn to identify good arguments. So who should you believe? Who should you trust with all the voices that are out there we want you to have the skills to be able to say, yes, that is a good argument I should believe you. Or, mm, I think you're just giving me a bunch of opinions. What's, what's backing that up? We're going to start today by looking at a, pretty, at a fairly good argument and evaluating. We're going to trace this argument through it. We're going to get more practice with this in the coming weeks. And we might see some bad arguments as well so that we can learn to spot the bad arguments and to make sure that when we end up writing our own arguments, that we make a good argument. So, needless to say, authors also make really careful arguments. A careful reader is going to trace this, this author's argument and evaluate, so think carefully about the strength of their evidence. Here's how we're going to do this today. We are going to look for a statement that shows opinion something that needs to be proven, so that would be like that argument for or against something. We're going to ask, what statements or implied ideas of fact does the author include to prove this? And then we'll find supporting evidence. In the future, we'll learn that supporting evidence might look like examples, short little stories or anecdotes, statistics, or expert quotes. You notice my short note here that sometimes people don't support their, their claims very well. We should be suspicious of claims that are not supported. We want to be able to notice those as well. Here is our exit ticket prompt. We want to know where we're headed so we can keep it in mind as we go. Today we're going to write a race response that answers the following prompt. Agree or disagree, the author proves his argument that Moctezuma was the unluckiest of kings. If you want to practice this for yourself, you might grab a note paper and think if you can come up with a plan, what are three or four steps you might do in order to fully answer this question. If you're going to try it on your own and then check it, pause the screen now and try it. Here are my suggestions. First, we've got to read the story and determine the central idea of the text. We're going to identify those supporting claims to the author's argument. The prompt already gives us the argument here. We'll look for the author's evidence. And finally, you need to decide, is this evidence convincing? Is it enough? Does he prove his argument? Let's jump into our first step where we're going to figure out the central idea. We'll remember, remind us of our nonfiction thinking jobs. If this is too small on your screen, you might want to read the attached PDF. Go ahead and follow along as I read. Feel free to pause and move back if you need to, uh, if there's anything that you miss, or if you want to pause for extra annotations on your scratch paper at home. Class of Clash of Cultures, Cortez con conquers Moctezuma and the Aztecs. Moctezuma, the ruler of the Aztec Empire of Mexico, was the unluckiest 
of kings. He oversaw the ruin of the last great Central American empire. I'm thinking already about my topic. Seems that it's about Moctezuma and the fall of the Aztec Empire. We've got our argument right up front uh, as we start figuring out what the rest of this is about. Though other Aztec rulers had encountered setbacks in their conquests, it was different from Moctezuma. He faced a foreign empire from across the sea with a leader, the Spaniard Hernán Cortés, and he was an intelligent and, and skillful as Moctezuma himself. But in the end, Cortés and his army conquered the Aztecs. After Christopher Columbus's historic voyage to North America in 1492, expeditions swarmed into the Aztec ter territory in present-day Mexico. They came in search of gold and, the process, and in the process spread Christianity. Within a generation, America's ancient civilizations were crushed, and both Aztec and Inca empires quickly collapsed. Historians have suggested many causes for this rapid defeat an undefeated Spanish army. The Spanish army was one of the strongest fighting forces on earth. It had not suffered a single defeat for 150 years. The Spaniards possessed cannons, guns, and swords that terrified the American tribes. Horses, which the Aztecs had never seen, gave the Spaniards greater mobility. Mobility is that you can move around faster. Against all this, the Aztecs' primary weapons were wooden clubs studded with glass-like rocks. Wars were religious practices to the Aztecs, and one of their main goals was to capture the prisoners for sacrifice. During the Battle of Tecnatlan, the largest city in the pre-Columbian Americas, and now Mexico City, Spanish conquistadors watched from a distance as the Aztecs dragged captives up the steps of the Great Temple to kill them. Meanwhile, Spaniards killed Aztec's leaders whenever they could. The Aztec Empire was a loose union of allies, many of whom resented the Aztec rule. In, in the Spanish, they saw their saviors, and Cortes used this to his benefit. In his final attack on Tecnatitlan, his band of 900 Spanish soldiers was joined by as many as 150,000 natives. The Europeans brought with them disease such as measles and smallpox, against which the American tribes had no natural immunity. Illness spread like wildfire, killing rulers of both the Aztecs and the Incas, along with millions of other people. Go ahead and pause here. Make a quick jot to yourself. What are some of the key ideas in this last section? Gifted generals but one made a crucial mistake. Finally, the personalities of Moctezuma and Cortes must be considered. Both were gifted generals and political leaders. But while Cortes was hard-headed and viewed things as they were, Moctezuma believed in magic and superstition. Long before Cortes arrived in 1519, signs of doom appeared. A comet, quote, bright as, as to turn night into day, lit the sky. Then, an important temple burned. Lastly, hunters brought Moctezuma a bird with a mirror strapped to its head. In it, he saw large numbers of people advance as for war, and they appeared to be half men, half deer. Then, spies brought tales of mountains floating upon the sea, the Spanish ships, and men with flesh very white, a long beard and hair to their ears. Moctezuma did not know if Cortes was a man or a god. He sent Cortes the feathery costume of Quetzalcoatl, along with other gifts. So that, that was an Aztec god. Cortes took the bold move of marching on Tenochtitlan with a force of 500, 500 Spanish soldiers and whatever warriors he recruited along the way. He faced Moctezuma on the city's southern causeway on November 8th of 1519. Moctezuma invited him in. Again, pause, jot some quick key facts. What are we learning about Moctezuma in this portion? Moctezuma is kidnapped. Tecnatlan later falls. Was this a political blunder or a smart tactical move? I'm quickly looking back to see what this is referring to. 
and seeing he's talking about Moctezuma inviting Cortez in. So was that a good move? Once inside the city, Cortez found himself isolated and at the mercy of the Aztec Empire. He quickly rectified matters. That means he set things straight. In another bold stroke, he kidnapped Moctezuma. With 30 seasoned soldiers, he entered the royal palace and gave the emperor a choice. Come with us or die. Moctezuma was fearful of these men gods, and so he submitted to them. Months later, while trying to calm an Aztec up uprising against the Spanish, Moctezuma was killed, and Cortez and his crew barely escaped. Nine months later, Cortez returned with a huge army of Spaniards and native fighters. They denied Tecnatlan food and fresh water, and on August 13th of 1521, Tecnatlan fell. Francisco Pizarro conquers the Incas ten years later. About ten years later, the Incas, who controlled the largest empire in pre-Columbian America, faced Spanish soldier and explorer Francisco Pizarro. The Incas suffered a similar fate as Pizarro, con conquered the Incan Empire and claimed their lands land for Spain. These great civilizations live on in their legends, art, and architecture. Their foods transformed Europe. Tomatoes, corn, and potatoes became staple foods in Europe. A new Atlantic world that incorporated elements of European, African, and American cultures was taking shape. This is the end of this text. Take a quick moment, jot your central idea to yourself, then answer the questions on the Ed Puzzle. As you've just seen, here's the correct answer. This is my version of the central idea. Moctezuma was defeated by Hernan Cortez because Cortez had better technology, and Moctezuma made choices based on superstition. So far, we have determined the central idea. We still have more steps we need to get to decide if we can answer, fully answer this question. We gotta identify these claims of the author's argument, find the author's evidence for each claim, and then decide. I'm gonna model with this one of identifying a claim and then finding the evidence to support the idea that Moctezuma was, quote, the unluckiest king. Let's see what we find in this one of those first sections. At the bottom of that first section, we have this phrase right here. Within a generation, America's ancient civilizations were crushed, and both the Aztec and Incan empires quickly collapsed. Historians have suggested many causes for this rapid defeat. This idea here, that the Americas' ancient civilizations were crushed, is a claim. That is a statement that is claiming to be a true or a fact. We're now going to see if the author supports this idea that they were crushed with some evidence and what sort of evidence that is. We go into this next portion. The Spanish army was one of the strongest fighting forces on earth, had not suffered a single defeat in 150 years. They possessed cannons, guns, swords that terrified the American tribes. They had horses the Aztecs had never seen. And against these, the Aztecs just had wooden clubs with glass-like rocks. So I pause and I'm saying, how were they crushed? Well, the Spanish had a better army. They had better technology. And the, poor, and the Aztecs were working off of uh, just things that weren't quite as good for killing lots of people for this sort of battle. I keep reading. So I'm like, oh, this seems like one example. So I've got one example of how or why they were crushed. Wars were religious for the Aztecs, and their main goal was to capture prisoners to, for sacrifice. So like if they took one of them and they like brought it up for sacrifice, maybe to instill fear. So it gives us an example of Spanish conquistadors watching as the Aztecs dragged a captive up the steps of a great temple and killed them there. On the other hand, Spaniards just killed the Aztec leaders as often as they could. So this seems like another example of maybe why their civilization collapsed, which would be pretty unlucky for Moctezuma. That the religion that they had seemed to slow down their warfare compared to the Spaniards did not seem at all slow about killing. Finally, we've got that the Aztec Empire was a loose union, a loose kind of connection of allies. And a lot of them didn't really like the Aztec rule. So they, these other 
native groups saw the Spanish as their saviors, and Cortes kind of weaseled his way into this. So his final attack had up to 150,000 natives. I'm seeing a number as part of our evidence here. So the, this, again, is one more example, as well as we're getting kind of a clear number in statistics supporting how and why the Aztec Empire quickly collapsed while Moctezuma was in charge. So far, this seems like some fairly compelling or believable evidence to support the claim that they were crushed and why. In order to get here, I looked for a statement that needed to be proved that they were crushed and then how or where the author is supporting this idea. I want you to try the same thing in this next section. I'm not going to read it to you. I want you to read this for yourself. You're thinking, what is the author's claim? And what evidence supports this claim? You're going to need to pause this screen, read it for yourself, take as long as you need to, and then hit play after you've read it. I'm moving on. I assume that you've already read this. If you haven't, make sure that you've paused it and then come back with us. This second claim and evidence, the one that you found on your own, go ahead and respond on the Ed Puzzle here. Here's what you should have come up with. That Moctezuma was believed in superstition instead, and that ended up kind of leading to his downfall. That seems pretty unlucky, because, you know, it's just what he believed. It's the system that his whole culture was in and it wasn't necessarily his fault. But now it's time for you to decide. We've determined a central idea. We've found supporting claims and then evidence for each of those claims. Now it's your time to bring all of this together and put it into a paragraph. Answer this question. Does the author, so agree or disagree, the author proves his argument that Moctezuma was the unluckiest of kings. Reminder that the strongest responses will have two pieces of evidence and explain for each of the evidences that you use of why it's convincing. So how does that piece of evidence prove this argument? Or why is the, where, where, what did the author not include that would have fully proved this if you decide to argue against it? Great work today, and we'll pick up uh, learning more about this topic tomorrow.